Roundup also damages the microvilli and suppresses digestive enzymes. I interviewed David Sandoval and Andre Naj, and they formulated a product which is designed into, was actually specifically designed about glyphosate. One, it repairs the microvilli, and two, it is designed to pull the glyphosate out of the tissues and to bring it out of the body. And their research, which they shared, shows a 74% reduction of glyphosate in the urine without changing the diet. And at the same time, a 75% reduction in, CR, in C-reactive protein, which is an inflammatory marker. Now, glyphosate is toxic to the mitochondria. The mitochondria are involved with aging, energy, cancer, and health all together. I've been, I actually presented at a conference. It was a two-day conference just on the mitochondria. There's a whole group of functional medical doctors and others that realize that the mitochondria is, is a major driver. 10% of our body weight, I'm told, is mitochondria. Some cells have 5,000 mitochondria in them. I think the heart cell that needs all that energy. And glyphosate and Roundup are toxic. One of the speakers described how they took tissues from an old person and a young person and analyzed it. And the only difference they found was in the old person, most of the mitochondria were damaged. So there's a mitochondrial theory of aging. And there's also a mitochondrial theory of cancer. Joe Mercola said the mitochondria in the interview is key to long life and overall health, and it produces free radicals and energy. And he described how we can have flexible diets. He talked about temporary keto diets and intermittent fasting, and he gave all sorts of very advanced um, biochemical pathways and how to supplement for those pathways to act more effectively so that we can basically give health to the mitochondria. Glyphosate also promotes birth defects. It is an endocrine disruptor, so it can mess up the hormones. It disrupts a key metabolic pathway that's responsible for, largely, for detoxing the liver. Now, a lot of the chemicals in the environment get detoxed by our liver. If we shut down that process, it means it amplifies all of the other toxins. So in that sense, glyphosate could be the mother of toxicity because it enhances the toxicity of others. Glyphosate was declared by the World Health Organization's Institute for Aid, or International Agency for Research on Cancer as a probable human carcinogen. They said it's probably carcinogenic to humans, but there's not enough studies. It's definitely carcinogenic to animals. It causes mutations in DNA, which can lead to cancer. And, as, and where it is applied, there are higher rates of cancer. Where I live now in California, glyphosate was declared a carcinogen by the government agency. There are a lot of, there's a lot of evidence now that it causes cancer. In fact, on our website, at responsibletechnology.org, I interview Brent Wisner, who is the brilliant, articulate, energetic, powerful thinking attorney who won the case against Monsanto in the Bay Area in the summer. And the jury awarded Lee Johnson, who had terminal cancer after spraying Monsanto's Roundup, awarded him $289 million of money from Monsanto, now Bayer. Bayer's stock price dropped 20 to 30 percent by 20 to 30 billion dollars. Because there's 9,700 more plaintiffs waiting in the wings now to sue. The judge dropped the award to 78 million, but if you multiply that by 9,700, you still get a very large number. Now, it's interesting that Dr. Charles Benbrook last week released a study showing that this organization, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, 
relied a lot on peer-reviewed published studies, most of which showed that glyphosate and Roundup damaged the DNA, which could lead to cancer. But the EPA looked at primarily company unpublished research that said it was safe. Imagine that. On the interviews, which I just added last week, I interview Brent Wisner about Dr. Parry. You see, Monsanto's executives were concerned because there was mounting evidence in the literature that glyphosate was causing mutations or genotoxicity in human DNA or DNA in general. And so they brought in arguably the world's leading expert, Dr. Parry, to figure out how they can get out of this. And they were hoping he would review some studies, say it's not genotoxic, and then they could settle the issue. So Dr. Perry looked at just the four studies that they were given, that he was given by his Monsanto people, and said, yeah, it appears that it's probably genotoxic and could lead to cancer. So they got very nervous about it, and they sent him all the data, hoping he'd reverse his mind. He said, no, based on this, it's definitely causing cancer. Definitely, it definitely is genotoxic. And to list, to, I actually had a chance to read some of the memos and emails and texts passed back and forth by Monsanto people, where one person wrote, has Dr. Parry ever done research for industry before? And, and another person saying, we could spend a lot of money trying to bring him around, but maybe we should just bring someone else in who we know will come around, who know, we know is on our side. So he wrote a report, Perry wrote a report, it was buried. They said, thank you very much. He never worked for Monsanto again. And Monsanto was legally required to turn over that report to the EPA. Oops, it was misplaced. They never did. Instead, and this, was, this came out in the memos that were made public because of this lawsuit, they ghost wrote a review paper which concluded just the opposite. Their review paper, which was cited by the EPA and the European authorities, the one that Monsanto wrote but didn't admit to writing, claims that there's no genotoxicity. And on that basis, that was one of the bases why these regulatory agencies gave Roundup and glyphosate flying colors. No problem. Now, Carrie Gillum, who, will be, who spoke here already and is speaking here tonight on a panel, I'll be joining her with Vanda Nashiva and Caitlin Shetterly. She has been following these Monsanto papers. And my interview with her is exactly how Monsanto covered up the damages. And she wrote an excellent book, and I, she can, I think it's for sale here. Um, and it's, I love catching the industry red-handed. I love when we find clear evidence, like the letter that was uncovered by Marion Copley to Jess Rowland. Jess had a master's degree in science, and, and Marion had a PhD, and she said to him, you're completely unqualified to determine whether glyphosate causes cancer. Here's 14 reasons why it causes cancer. Please do something finally, please finally do something for public good and not to increase your bonuses or help the companies that are submitting the products. Please determine that glyphosate causes cancer. And this other woman that you're working with, if anyone in the, in the agency is taking bribes, it's her. This was a powerful letter. Marion Copley was a 30-year senior toxicologist at the EPA but she had, to, she had to leave because she had cancer. And at the end she says, I have cancer, and I wanted to make sure I did the right thing before I go to my grave. Pleading with Jess Rowland. Jess Rowland's name came up in Monsanto papers. He was their lapdog. He's the one that said, if I can stop this other agency from doing a test of glyphosate and cancer, I deserve a medal. He was telling that to his Round his, his Monsanto handlers. They said how he was a valuable asset at the EPA. How valuable? 
He was in charge of the committee in the EPA that determined that glyphosate did not cause cancer. He was in charge of the committee that we now know cherry-picked the data, ignoring 80 or so published, peer-reviewed studies, and instead moving to the studies produced by companies like Monsanto, and we just heard the kind of studies, unquote, that they produce. They came up with a tentative or a preliminary result, which wasn't supposed to be published. Magically, it appeared on the website. It was immediately copied by Monsanto. It was sent to different regulatory agencies. It was sent to the media, and then it was taken down. And a few days later, Jess Rowland left the agency. And Monsanto used that preliminary determination to fight their fight around the world, probably put up by their lapdog. I don't know. Glyphosate promotes leaky gut. How many people have heard of leaky gut? How many people have heard of autoimmune disease? How many people know that they're linked? Almost everyone that raised their hand. Here's my quick definition of how. Food is normally broken down into teensy-weensy pieces. That's a technical term. In the gut, it gets absorbed through the walls of the cell, one cell thick walls of the intestine into the bloodstream. It becomes our nutrition. Glyphosate, if you put it in a petri dish with human cells, they'll separate. The tight junctions separate. Bt toxin in a petri dish pokes holes inside the cells. Those are two types of leaky gut. Inside the cell, between the cell. If you have holes in the gut, then you have undigested proteins. Not the teensy weensy ones, the big, huge ones. And they lumber into the, into the bloodstream, and the immune system treats it as a, an invader. And the immune system takes out the iPhone, they're a very modern immune system, they take a picture, okay, smile everyone, we're now the immune system, okay? Here we go, got you on the picture, okay, I actually took your picture. Um, and they post it on Facebook, I won't do that now. And they send it to the rest of the immune system and say, Anything that looks like this is an enemy, attack it. But they have an old iPhone. It's pixelated, it's hard to read. So they attack anything that looks like that protein. The thyroid, the pancreas, the microvilli. That's autoimmune disease. It's the immune system attacking itself because it thinks it's attacking an invader because of two things, leaky gut and old iPhones. So that's how autoimmune disease works. The body attacks itself. And that's one of the things that are linked to leaky gut. Also cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, heart disease, food sensitivities, inflammation of all types. And did I say autism? Okay. In terms of leaky gut, we have evidence from Zach Bush that when you put glyphosate in the... Two, in the uh, petri dish, but you put his uh, product in there first, it doesn't separate. Or once it separates and you add his product, it then recombines. So these are ways to heal from GMOs and Roundup based on real evidence as well as clinical evidence. Now glyphosate is an antibiotic. That's its second patent. And we know that it kills beneficial bacteria the kind of stuff we like in yogurt that we pay for, the lactobacillus, the bifidobacteria. It doesn't kill the botulism, the E. coli, the salmonella. I realize, how many people are like aware that the microbiome is like cutting edge in medicine right now? So it's cutting edge in medicine right now. Now you're aware. Um, it's amazing how important the gut bacteria is. And here's an example of one thing that's happening to cows probably across this country in Europe. There is bacteria inside the gut of a cow which suppress the Clostridium botulinum um, bacteria. And Clostridium botulinum produces bot toxin, one of the most toxic substances known to man. But glyphosate easily kills this bacteria. So now we have in the gut of animals an explosion of Clostridium botulinum, and an explosion of botulism toxin. 
And so chronic botulism turns out to be an epidemic proportions. And we think it's because of the Roundup Ready crops that are being fed to the animals. Now, I mentioned earlier that Mike McNeil shared a story about botulism, and it's quite emotional. And I will say it, and I might tear up, and so what? It's exciting. He was giving a talk, and was invited. He had a couple of days, or a day after the, his talk, he was ab able to leave late, so he, he was visiting with someone who was in the audience and said, I'd like to show you my dairy. He was very proud of his dairy, so Mike McNeil, an agronomist, went to see his cows. And he was observing, and he was looking around here and looking around, and at the end, the, the farmer said, so what do you think? And he said, very fine-looking cows. Excellent. But then he had to be really gentle. And he said, you know, I noticed that you had a couple of cows that were not eating well. Uh, I'm going to make a little prediction that in a few days, I think they were going to eat a lot, and then they were going to, the next day, they were going to be dead. Maybe with foamy mouths. I forget the details. It was, it was several months ago that I interviewed him. But he was, when he said that, the farmer got white and said, oh my God, that just happened. What is it? And he said, these cows are suffering with chronic botulism. They have all the signs. And it's because of the Roundup. Because he says, but I don't use Roundup. He says, I noticed that there was some dried distiller grains that you use to supplement your feed that did not have non-GMO written on it and did not have organic written on it. And they're loaded with Roundup. So your cows probably got botulism toxin and are dying, some of them, because of it. And he said, and don't drink that milk. And then the guy froze and said, what could happen? My grandchild is in the hospital. Two months old. They don't know why. It was fed the milk. Mike said, go to the hospital right now. Ask them to test for botulism poisoning. Do it. Don't stand here. Go right now. Saved his life. It was Botox. It was a very dramatic story, and there's a lot of them in this, in this uh, series. Now, the microbiome is amazing. It's like another organ working on, Mar on our behalf. Kieran Krishnan does research into the microbiome, and he has a product that he's identified the superhero keystone strains that help with biodiversity, that help with inflammation. And he says that right now there's evidence that nearly all of the major diseases that we face, all of them, including Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, obesity, diabetes, start with dis destructed or destroyed uh, balance in the microbiome. And if you can actually keep the balance in the microbiome, you're doing amazing work to protect yourself from a long list of diseases. And he's doing research on glyphosate, clinical research, he's doing research in fake guts, he's doing all sorts of actual hands-on research, not just looking it up and saying, well, this strain helps here, so we'll package it and sell it. He's seeing that if they work that way, even in combination with other strains. How many people have heard of Dr. Dietrich Klinghart? He's like, a, in, the, in the progressive health field, he's like a demigod. He's the one that basically popularized the danger of Lyme disease. He popularized the danger of mercury poisoning. And I saw him speak in an environmental health symposium, and he said, the next big toxin we need to focus on is glyphosate. And he told me he had a whole glyphosate protocol for detoxing and, and repairing, and that's what was one of the major inspirations for me to do this series. And he told me something that I had never heard from anyone else. He said his sickest patients, including those with autism, when you test their urine, they have no glyphosate in the urine. He starts the detox protocol, and then the amount of glyphosate starts to show up and increase in the urine. It's possible that these very sick individuals 
are unable to detox glyphosate without assistance. Because normally we think that if we have high levels of glyphosate, then we're at greater risk, higher levels in our urine. It's interesting that uh, we're going to hear about the amount of glyphosate in the urine of dogs in a few minutes and what that might be related to. Now, one of the best ways to get a healthy microbiome is from fermented vegetables. How many people have fermented their own vegetables? So this woman, Karen Diggs, did a crowdsourcing campaign for an invention that she called CrowdSource, where it was a top that you can screw on to mason jars that makes creating fermented vegetables easier than cooking food. And she described, and she's also a chef, so she actually has a, a um, cookbook and sells even spice combinations so that it's not just always cabbage turned into sauerkraut, but a whole variety of different healthy, uh, delicious fermented vegetables. And she was also interviewed. Now, another problem of Roundup is that it's toxic to the liver. In fact, they found that in this study that the amount of Roundup in the water supply that caused non-alcoholic fatty liver disease was so small the EPA allows in our water supply on a per body weight per day basis 437,500 times more. In other words, these rats had high parts per trillion glyphosate and they developed non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. 25% of Americans have that. It leads to other more serious diseases like cancer, cirrhosis, etc. cetera. 